we here at What Did I Just Watch fully endorse Kung Fu films. Not only do you get some of the best-looking exhibitions of martial arts, but the stories can range from serious biopics to a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. You have Ip Man on one end of the spectrum, which is a stylized retelling of the life of the man who trained Wing Chun to Bruce Lee. Then you have the other end, where the Shaw's brothers bring you Crippled Avengers, a movie where a blind man, a deaf guy, someone who loses his legs, and someone who becomes mentally handicapped battle a man with no arms who's planning a birthday party. But what happens when Disney tries to do Kung Fu? And do you really want to find out? If so, then join myself, Paul, and Charlie as we discuss Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. Who the hell writes things like this? Who, who's this guy? Why is he here? So we're just cutting to here now. Why not? They couldn't even write the animals well. How does that just there? Sense? How could he be there now? Him. Like this? No, no, just take not, off. What's this guy? Just that act. Fuck me. What did I just watch? <laughs> well, none of the white people <laughs> were very good looking. It was all the Asian people. Oh. I do the mom. I mean, I do the grandmother. <laughs> you dirty the, motherfucker! You do the grandmother. I do the brother. I, I think what, this what? is the last time I'm going to put a kids movie on. Our <laughs> <podcast>. <laughs> Obviously, this is the wrong, wrong place to watch that. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't made for us, and we're. Uh, not. I feel like we're cynical assholes anyway. We are. We are, and no, this was not made for us. Yeah. This is what's called a decom movie. Apparently, um, they actually needed acronyms. I actually had to look it up because I read a whole bunch of reviews that were like, this is the highest rated DCOM of all time. I'm like, is that an STD or what the fuck is DCOM? Something Wendy Disney Wu Channel original time. movie. Disney Channel original movie. Yeah, apparently this has a for? huge fan base. No, well, not just this it's movie. Fan base for this stuff? Yeah, yeah, there's a huge fan base. Well, this Disney was like uh, High School the Musical was this. Or was High School the Musical a regular movie? It was a movie, but I bet no, it was that, along the same lines as this. Yeah. Acting um, lines especially. The first one... And second one were Disney Channel movies. The third one got a theatrical release. Yeah, and very tough to masturbate. The High School Musicals. Yeah, I thought they were all theatrical releases. I'm pretty sure. Didn't the first wasn't really? Not that I'm aware of. I thought I know the third one was. Yeah, the third one got a theatrical release because of the first two. Um, they were just so successful. I didn't think they actually thought that it was going to go as big as it did, but it did. And well. Then we ended up with shit like Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. Well, yeah. Wendy Wu was 06. When was when was High School the Music? You know how much shit I had to actually look up for this movie? And you know what the one thing I didn't look up was? <laughs> high School High School musical? fucking musical, because why would I? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think we'd have to go start, Didn't you say that's what started all this? Paul, <laughs> why don't you give us like a quick rundown of what Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior is actually about? Well, it, there is an ancient Chinese prophecy, you see. Of a every ninety every, years, every ninety years, yeah, it's every other generation. It seems that there's a chosen one, and this in this generation it happens to be some teenage girl who uh, lives in California, and she's supposed to defeat evil, and that's the plot. So it's Buffy the Vampire. Slayer. It's pretty much Buffy, but really terrible. I would yeah. actually prefer Buffy. I didn't hate the movie. I mean, I definitely didn't like it compared to the series, but. I don't know how you can get worse than than uh, mediocre. I mean, the thing about this is it was basically just a kung fu film made by Disney. I mean, the the story is generic. The fighting was really good. I thought the fighting was pretty good. I'd compare it to like Jackie Chan's coordination. Uh, 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 sorry, not coordination. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, actually, the plot was described by the Jackie Chan author and numerous critics as a teen installment of Jackie Chan plot with a Disney twist. And a guy named Gary Marsh called the film Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now that's going a bit too far. A little bit. Though not exactly you said wrong. Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Yeah, dude, there was like, that dude was jumping around like uh, on, on strings and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they said yeah. the same production value as cr- Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> like, yeah, shut you, the which, fuck you, up. which you can tell by the animation. You see, the, the main villain, what he does is he comes out of this glowing sphere of evil, I guess, and then he goes into other people. That's kind of what the movie is. It's, it's like The Hidden. And there are probably some other better, you know, movies to describe this as other than The Hidden because no one knows what the fuck The Hidden was, but that's a great movie, and I'm going to use that as my analogy, sure, goddammit. Sure, sure, sure. I'm not going to say no. The bad guy finds a new a new body, and he jumps into different people. And every time he does that, the people's eyes glow green. Like someone put 
green stickers on their eyes that just kind of glow a little bit. It's it terrible. Like an After Effects type uh, special effect. I feel like they got the uh, the FX guy from Walker Texas Ranger and yep. Goosebumps. Like absolutely. they got. Oh yeah, especially Goosebumps. That's yeah. absolutely the quality. They're like, all right, you choreograph the fights, guy from Texas Ranger. Also, we're glad that you did Goosebumps because <laughs> you're the same guy. Yeah, because <laughs> you're the same guy for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you're, both, you're both from the 90s, and we don't know. But I'd actually like to say that Jackie Chan was mentioned in, di- in the dialogue in this movie. It was kind of weird. I think the brother said it after... Was it the brother? It might have been the, the, the Kung Fu Master, the monk. Um, I was going to talk about the uh, like the <laughs> the Chinese lettering at the very beginning. I thought it was like I, I that's like a good way to be like this movie's going to be insensitive, and it, like it's just the uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like they do it on all Chinese food takeout menus and shit. Like the it's just random characters. Yeah, it's like the um, oh god, it's it's tough to say, but you look at it and you go, oh, that's an Oriental type of writing. <laughs> like the font might actually be called Oriental. You know, it's, well, the rugs it's, in this the rugs in this movie were certainly called Oriental. Come stand with Microsoft Word. S- s- they yeah. were Asian, not just Asian. They were Chinese. They were Chinese. The um, and then like again, right off the bat, he's like <laughs> the fucking teacher. He's like, Wendy. What is this? Uh, what is, what is this uh, mountain called in China? This mountain yeah, region. This is actually the very it, beginning. This it, was in. This is when they cut to it, like. Uh, yeah, this, this is the, like the the, te- the black teacher. In, in yeah, the she's and she's clearly yeah. daydreaming about fucking getting plowed by a retarded boyfriend and, and oh like not God. paying attention. There's a room full of other white students, and he's picking on the Chinese one to fucking answer this question. Yeah, I thought that was. Uh, that, All right, that you was know, pretty odd. What do you want to start with? You want to start with the retarded characters? Do you want to start with the, the blatant racism on display here? Well, we should probably start with at least the characters. All right. So first off, let's talk about Wendy Wu. Not not her skill because um, the woman who plays her actually has a black belt in Taekwondo, and she did a lot of work. Did uh, she not do her own stunts? It didn't look like her. I, no, actually, well, some of the stunts probably not, but she did. Do a lot of her own kung fu. <laughs> she practiced wushu and saline kung saline. Look at my notes. I'll spell it out. S a l e n. It's like I, I wanted to. I almost said Salem. It's like Salem style kung fu. So she was basically <laughs> riding around on a broom. She, Although she did use a broom. It's like, like it's so a it's, staff. It's the kung fu that uh, you hang innocent people from a tree. Well, it's yeah, Jackie so, Chan inspired. I don't doubt she would use a mop or. <laughs> so she she trained for about sixteen hours a day for two weeks to learn wushu and saline kung fu. In order to make this look good, and you know what? Worked. It did. She looked great. The wire work where she was throwing around or would do like those kicks and flips were wonderful. Some of the best I've seen in kung fu films, let alone a stupid Disney movie. Yeah. You know I, what? You know what? She probably should have spent another two weeks and sixteen hours a day practicing. What? Her acting. Oh yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> there was, she wasn't the worst though. Everybody no. else sucked. <laughs> also, that's terrible. The, that's the problem. Um, Wendy Wu is your hero. This is the person who you're going to be with th- throughout the whole movie. So you kind of want her to be, oh, you know, likable. Yeah, but th- th- the thing is, here's, here's another problem with, with her being completely unlikable, which I completely agree with. The other girl that she's competing with, and, and she's like competing to be homecoming queen throughout this entire fucking movie, there's another girl, a rival. A, a oh, it's a white girl. Everybody, you know, it's got, it's got to be. This movie is very white. This is very, this is, well, it is. Despite like, the fact that it's about Chinese people, it's very white. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Even the Chinese people are very fucking white in this movie. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the guy, there's the the dad who he's like, "Hello, I am an ad exec." But he he actually even says that he was denying his Chinese heritage uh, his whole life. But, um, sorry, but yeah. So Wendy Wu, I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, the other girl is just as fucking unlikable, and she's just as much of an asshole. And you know what's funny? I'm looking at this now, Wendy. Wu, I'm not gonna cut corners here. Wendy Wu is a cunt. Oh yeah, capital C U N. I was about to say that. Yeah, she's a bit of an asshole. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She has a black she, belt she's more in being. Than a bitch. She's more than just an unlikable character. She's a fucking cunt. But that, that's that's like a that's a issue with like the writing of the movie, of course. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was easily when, that. I'm pretty sure it was the first guy who came up with the idea was like. How do teenagers talk? Ah, well, let me record my daughter for a week, and he just happened to have a bitch of a daughter, and then he just made a whole movie about that. I'd also like to say the first time they cut to her friends, they're talking about boys. <laughs> well, of course they are. It's also a Disney tween movie. Yeah. So boys have to be in the very first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 100th scene of the goddamn movie. Every time they cut to the friends, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you have this rival, and this is your first pseudo-conflict. you know, conflict. And here's the thing. 
they make it very clear that this person has followed Wendy Wu and does everything exactly like Wendy Wu does. I believe since the fourth grade. Since the fourth grade. Now, let's drop the whole fact that Wendy Wu is supposed to be our protagonist, and let's look at this other character, something that the movie did not do. This other person has been tormented her whole life Mm -hmm. by someone who the movie clearly makes out to be the greatest person, someone who's the most popular in school, someone who has the best boyfriend, somebody who lives in a house that I don't think most people could afford, and she just wants to be like this person. She wants to be liked and cared. And she's the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> fuck her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd actually like to counter something, to, to make a counterpoint, and it is absolutely a ridiculous counterpoint. Counterpoint with P.T. Go on. So this is a, this is a, a movie, and this is a, a world where uh, magic exists, right? Apparently. Yeah. I feel like that this other girl does have an advantage on Wendy Wu because she's fucking psychic. Psych- psychic? She's psychic. Did, did I miss she another thing? Oh. I didn't see Mickey Rooney, obviously. Now, in the, in the very beginning of the movie... Uh, to promote her homecoming nomination, she makes cupcakes like for the whole class. Oh yeah, they never resolved that. They- no, they did resolve it. Um, the what was it? The girl, the girl, her rival <laughs> went on television, on television as the weather, as a guest weather girl, to 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 say, hey, I got cupcakes. I'm making cupcakes. When I he was, it was like that fucking cat. Oh, how could she go on TV and make cupcakes? I was gonna make cupcakes. I'm like, how the fuck? Did she know to make cupcakes? And then, um... And then, yeah, that, that's what I said about they never resolved that, because the whole thing started they with... They resolved it. She just went, yeah, they, I want to bring the school. You can have a mom. They, resol- they, they that's resolved it. resolution. That's they the- don't resolve that particular <laughs> issue where it's like, how did you know? They just did it and just left it. And that's the thing. That's how the rivalry starts, well, over cookies it. and fucking cupcakes. Well, the, the uh, I mean, they did resolve it because Wendy Wu actually said, I'm not going to take these, Mom. You could take them. And then uh, she went on Facebook and called that girl fat. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you forgot that. Scene too. Yeah, she she. Uh, she I, I won don't the know battle. if you guys are fucking with war. me or if these were actual <laughs> scenes in the movie because they could be. No, and then the girl became anorexic, and Wendy Wu high fived everyone. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was great. And then Wendy Wu kicked her in the face and decapitated her. Oh wait, wait, no, this is the this is the alternate ending <laughs> right. to the to oh, what we saw on YouTube. Oh wait, this was the script PT and I wrote <laughs> fixing the movie. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the actual storyline because we need to talk about the other characters in the movie. Um, what was the the main guy? There was the. It starts out with Shaolin monks training, and you have the main male co something like he's a co. He's the male co star, I guess. He's a mo- he's a monk, the monk, right? Yeah, yeah. The monk so guy. he so you have this monk, and it starts out with him training, and the thing is, he is training with these other monks and beating the shit out of them and laughing. Yeah, I was gonna say he was he laughing it. like Wendy would. <laughs> but it makes him out to be like a free spirit, like someone who can do all these things but still have a sense of identity and drops completely <laughs> once he actually meets Wendy Wu. He becomes one of those other monks where I thought I was gonna have fun with this or they were gonna do something I don't know, entertaining. That would have been nice. Beyond the fight scenes, I would have liked something to be entertaining. He was just typical fish didn't. out of water. Well, then he's so he's following Wendy at uh, at one point. He's following Wendy along, and because um, she's the secret warrior, we already clarified all this. Yeah, but right? like at yep. first, in the, at first, when the monk is coming by to like check on Wendy, she, like he's like kind of being creepy and sneaking around and creepy. Stuff. He's a fucking stalker. Yeah, yeah he's a crazy he's, stalker. He's and a they, Disney, here's one thing that I wish Disney Channel did. Maybe tone that down. Oh yeah, because by playing it up. They're saying that this is okay, and when you're talking about these right. highest-rated decom movies, it's like, oh, is that Stalker Boy doing a 24/7? I'm looking outside of your window thing. Perfectly fine. Yeah, you're gonna end up with a happy, happy ending. Yeah, it's probably a month. You're totally not gonna end up like half naked and decapitated on the side no, of the road. No, 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 this is gonna be a good ending for you. Yeah, I mean, he used like magical powers to force his way in too. By the way, like, yeah. This is, oh god, this is sounding worse and worse. I mean, he so. <laughs> It's totally okay that this monk stands in trees outside of a 16-year-old girl's house, but when <laughs> I do it, I'm a fucking monster, right? I have magical powers, Charlie. Let me in. I just want to see you. I want to touch you. You're, you're the chosen one. <laughs> you're the chosen one. Let me in. Look at my magic. <laughs> Why are you following me? Because you're super special, Wendy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is exactly what this monk is telling yeah. her. <laughs> Show me your tits. Yeah. Well, well, that's right. That's, right. that's, so it's that's not, what he's implying. It's but, not hard to describe <laughs> these scenes because... Because we've all seen this type of movie dozens of times. You basically have all these characters coming together where you have the parents who are um, 
people who are rejecting their own heritage but have to come around to it. You have the main protagonist who's supposed to have this arc of she's kind of a jerk, but then she becomes good, which I would argue she never does, and the fish out of water. So as the scenes progress, obviously what's going to happen is you're going to have those arcs. He's The main uh, monk is going to learn to fit in. The parents are going to learn to do... You know, whatever it is, I guess acknowledge their own heritage. Yeah, acknowledging their own heritage. And Wendy Wu has to finally step up and become the the warrior she was meant to be. Maybe even putting aside the homecoming thing. So now we have that out of the way. We know what this movie's about. Let's talk about some of the individual scenes and how they just completely fuck up any likability that we. Oh, is easily. Yeah. Well, I just want to talk about. So I, th- I thought there was a couple of missed missed opportunities in this movie. There's the, the whole movie is yeah. nothing but missed opportunities. Missed opportunities. Yeah. And I think a big one at the very beginning was uh, the fact they should have gotten Tommy Wiseau to play the monk. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? He's been on everybody's minds. <clears throat> oh, it would have been it would have been perfect. I mean, oh hi, Wendy. I stand in tree now. Yeah, like, it would have been. Perfect. I don't know if you're good. trying to do a Tommy Wiseau impression or you're just doing another racist Asian impression. Well, I mean, and, well that's really what I'm hard saying. To tell. Yeah, it's so hard to tell. This, this, um, is Tommy Wiseau making fun of all Asian people, or yeah. is he just uh. Tommy Wiseau? <laughs> oh hi, Wu. Oh, you're right. He does sound Asian. Oh hi, Wu. Oh hi, babe. <laughs> <laughs> makes me hate this movie and Tommy Wiseau more. <laughs> How great would that be if Tommy Wiseau was the monk? He's just like sitting in the tree watching Wendy change, you know, like the other monk did in this movie. Missed opportunities. Fuck. Yeah, that's a big one. I, mean, a, I, got, a, I got a ton of missed opportunities here. I um, mean, beyond the action, this, this movie could have been a lot more. I mean, many of the cast members were Power Rangers at some incarnation. <laughs> I don't actually. Now that I think about was that, was it all the white people at the party? Is that what it was? <laughs> Probably. I don't remember the blonde-haired, retarded Power Ranger. Which one was that? So they could have taken it to the nth degree. They had a cast that could move more. I mean, beyond fighting, they all just kind of stood around or I don't know, act like complete dicks. Or I mean, this is the kind of movie where, in one moment, you have all the monks in China speaking English, <laughs> and then when he goes to America, he speaks to the grandmother. In Chinese. And <laughs> yeah, so I don't weird. know what they were doing. They were basically like, oh no, English people can only take so much Chinese. This is so foreign to them. Let's not blow their minds all at once by having them speak their own native language. <laughs> Do they think that their audience couldn't read? I think, oh yeah, I think that's more of yes. what it is. They wanted, like, let's have a minimal amount of subtitles. And apparently they can't take a, a, a beginning uh, establishing scene uh, full with subtitles. Listen, listen. I'm all for not dumbing down America, which is why I'm kind of offended that, yeah, the Nielsen ratings w- were basically targeting 8 to 11s and 11-year-olds and um, 11 to 14-year-olds, <laughs> and, and it hit those numbers, but for Christ's sake, they've already learned to read at that point. Did they just not want to, it's like, I don't think their thought process was, well, one day I want, maybe they're going to move on to more artistic uh, forms of cinema, ones that require a little bit more thought process, and um, it's not necessarily going to come from America, so they really need... No, I guarantee there's like, reading is dumb. Don't yeah. do it. Our numbers say that kids don't want to read TV. They <laughs> don't want to watch TV. You're literally looking at numbers! Yeah, How do you that, know that? That's not what our numbers say. <laughs> you So you guys like the fight scene. <laughs> I did. And, I didn't hate him. And uh, I did not like the fight. I thought the fight scenes were too fucking long. So like the first oh, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they definitely weren't great. Yeah. They were definitely really, I thought that th- I thought they were ish. they were fun to watch, and I was so glad that they that they happened because there's a huge swath in the middle of the movie where nothing happened. There were plenty of montages. I was tempted to. Uh, Fast forward through the fight scenes, but God damn it, I have integrity and I watch the whole thing. Well, did you notice that, like in the first one, when the brother was the brother was taken over by a, a oh my god, what was that one like forty five minutes long great. for Christ's sake? <laughs> but yeah, that was that yes. Yeah, so what they were trying to go for in that scene was that the brother gets taken over, yeah. and the Shaolin monk is still trying to get into Wendy Wu's house, which is just saying these things make me feel dirty. So yeah, anyway, like they have this fight scene where Wendy Wu is on the couch sleeping. Sleeping, and he the monk is fighting the brother, 
A lot of rosin, by the way. It's like they're they're they, when they every time they hit each other, they're like boom, puff of smoke, boom, puff of smoke, boom, puff of smoke. Well, you know, you got to prepare. It's like doing gymnastics. You got to chalk oh, up oh, and yeah, punch yeah, a yeah. guy in the face. That's Again, missed works. missed opportunity here. I mean, how great would it be? They do this like long drawn out fight scene, and then all of a sudden you just, you hear a big gun noise, and there's Wendy holding a smoking gun, just shoots the monk in the face. <laughs> okay, that's got you, him. That would have been that's, the end of the movie. <laughs> oh, that's where you're going with this. I was I was afraid you're gonna be like, so Wendy Wu just lying there. The the bad guys win, and then all of a sudden. And turns into the wandering kid. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. The uh, Wendy shoots him. Just shoots him in the face. And then, why, yeah, why didn't anyone bring a gun to these karate fights? I feel like they would have been <laughs> over a bunch quicker. <laughs> this is America, goddamn. Have... Di- that would be very dishonorable. Yeah, Disney yeah. came around with uh, Marvel. They have guns now, so oh, yeah. it's uh. not infeasible. But yeah, so the whole point to that fight scene was that they're trying to do everything without breaking stuff, being silent, very Jackie Chanish. And there's a lot of gym was... mats with uh, with uh, Oriental rugs over them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That, I thought it was, I thought it was fun. I thought it was great yeah. to look at, and it was, it actually worked with what they were doing in what they call the story. They definitely like. I can see what Charlie's saying. They repeated a lot of the moves and stuff that they were doing. Yeah. Like they would jump over the couch, jump over the couch, go up the stairs, jump down the stairs, go over the couch, up the stairs, down the stairs. It was very repetitive. I'll definitely give you. Yeah, I think they were trying to get this. I would think they were trying to keep the security deposit on their set. Which <laughs> right, <laughs> right, that could that could have been set. it. <laughs> Again, if if Wendy shot, they was like it was like I got Dad's gun and I killed that intruder. I mean, how fucking great of their a movie that would Dad would have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's an advertising exec. Yeah, that, that John Wayne looking motherfucker. Surprised he's yeah. not an alcoholic. Yeah, that would explain his uh, dad joke. You need a slogan? Well, I work in marketing. How about Wendy Who? Wendy Woo? That would fucking, make millions of dollars. Fucking probably terrible. Would. Well, oh, my last slogan made uh, everyone millionaires. It was uh, gut milk. Yeah. That's oh, that's the gut milk guy. No. Oh. <laughs> I What's wrong with you two? All right, so the way these kung fu films work usually is that you have the mentors come in, or there's some training. Uh. They fight that tooth and nail. Most of the middle, the middle of the movie is insulting to teenagers because all they want to do is go shopping. Yeah, that was kind of weird. They they definitely like had a lot of strange filler. Like they had the montage scene, and then they went to a party. And then they, or no, no, they, they went. They had a montage scene. Then they did a little bit of training. Then they went to a party. And then, uh, then they had another montage scene. It was very strange. Yeah, very yeah they, bizarre. And the thing is, it's not like the movie doesn't have these parts where the mentors come and actually train Wendy Wu. I thought that was. Really they awesome. just crammed it into the last fifteen minutes of the that movie. Was the, fucking! It was eight, the was, animals. <laughs> This is also where the movie gets more fucked up. Before it was like it the the bad guy was possessing all these people. That's kind of fucked up in its own right. Now we have the good guy saying the that the spirits inside these little statues can possess people. Now the way they the reason they're doing it is because Wendy said it would look weird if I fight old people in the park. Not that it's weird that magical dudes are coming out of statues. And around people walking around everywhere, by the way. It's weird, yet you're fighting in a park. Yeah, also, you're, your teachers. Right. Also, yeah. your fucking teachers. That's who gets possessed. She, the, like All of these little statues, uh, the spirits inside, possess the teachers. Now, these teachers are doing their, their own thing. They're teaching, they're living their lives. Then all of a sudden, they're getting yanked in to be... Possessed by like old to do spirits? some kung fu training. Yeah. The the other thing too is her whole cover for this entire thing was that she uh, was fucking her cousin. Yes, everybody <laughs> thinks that this this guy is her cousin, and at that party that I mentioned before, she's starting to uh, like this guy. Yeah, the the monk, <laughs> and it's and, and like it's even brought up by this girl. She's like, "Oh, we're me and the monk are here together." Said Wendy Wu. The girl's like, "Wait a minute, aren't you cousins?" <laughs> So everybody thinks that they're cousins, and, and you she's filthy over cousin them. fucker. Yeah, yeah. And that's the that's what I hate the most about <laughs> how they structured this. Because I said going in, I know exactly how this is going to be structured. There's going to be a definitive act one. It lasts thirty minutes. You have a definitive act two. It lasts forty minutes, and then you have a definitive act three that and that lasts twenty minutes. I was off by five minutes, mainly because I crammed everything in in the last possible minute. But when I say that they crammed everything in at the last second. I mean that they took their entire act two and put it into a five-minute segment, and then what you're saying was their act two, when it should have been her actually training and maybe inserting these things here and there. Her whole act two was her falling in love with this stupid monk, which to everyone else around her was incestuous. 
Yeah, why did they add the the cousin part? Can they just I don't know. Uh, Distant friend. Foreign exchange student. Yeah. What was so hard <laughs> about foreign exchange student? My favorite part. Will you go to the dance with me? No. What? Why? I'm 32 years old. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, that, the monk was definitely, yeah. obviously, in get, his, a little, get a little caught up in the high school scene there. Yeah, um, a little bit. I thought it was pretty funny that her her name is Wendy, but her I thought it was fucking racist too. Her friends call her Wen, W E N. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, oh, her wow. friends are calling her Wen. They're like, oh hi Wen, <laughs> and she's like, uh, hi doggy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wendy. I mean, she. Uh, her name is Wendy, and they call her Wen. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard like a Wendy being called Wen? I don't think I so. Don't, I don't know any. That Wendy's. wasn't a kung fu. I, actually, I also don't know any Wendy's beyond a burger. Yeah, is that a name that's died? Is that just a name that doesn't? I think so. Hey, Paul, you want to go to Wen's? <laughs> Let's go to Wen's. <laughs> Let's go to those mooncakes. Yeah. Which, by <laughs> the way, I, I looked up. They made a big deal about those mooncakes. Yeah, whatever. I looked them up. Um, it's. Hold on. Hold on one second. Sorry, the uh, the grandmother made mooncakes, and they were a weird theme. I think they were they were like what in, triggered. Yeah. For some reason, that what they were what triggered the uh, the father's like I am not a proper Chinese immigrant. Like I, I don't. I'm like, oh, that was another missed opportunity I had there. Like the the father gets up and he's just like he's like he walks away all sullen. So they they were talking at the dinner table and talking I about Chinese didn't culture. And that scene. Like, yeah. What? And um and the father gets upset and he he gets up and leaves and it turns out later something about Chinese culture and he's not honoring it. I thought it was a great missed like and they he gets up in the middle of it and they're like well, well isn't being Chinese great and they were like he just gets up and he leaves and they look at him and they go what's wrong and he goes I'm Korean. <laughs> So, <laughs> if only that happened. So, so this this mooncake that they uh, really were pushing and looks really good. I mean, it looked like it was something filled with chocolate, yeah. but it wasn't. So this is a pastry that is it's traditionally eaten during their mid autumn festival, which they were you know they actually went on about right. And it's made from red bean or lotus seed paste. Mm. And the crust contains the yolk from salted duck eggs. Mm. So, yeah, they really wanted that to look like something that every kid should try. And when they find out what's what's in it, I think they vomit on their mother's I'd probably try it. I'd probably see how it were. I, go, I always try anything once. Like Wendy Wu. Just like Wendy Wu. So, another missed opportunity. Do you guys remember when she's uh, playing soccer? And so, like, another thing that happens in this movie is Wendy uh, starts to discover that she has these kung fu powers. I don't know why she needed to train, because she was pretty good at it. She was damn good. <laughs> yeah. yeah she, without it, fucking it, I training. I just magically have powers. I don't know why they didn't and just, like, hey, let's bring this it, up. It's because the script said that when you, you forget the powers at this point, and you remember them at that point. Yeah, I think we all know what those powers revolved around, too. Eat this moon cookie. You now have powers. Something changed in you. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. Anyway, so the... Um, the missed opportunity I saw was when they're playing soccer and she fucking fires those. Uh, she fires the soccer ball at the girl. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like she kicks it really hard and like it hits her in the stomach and she just falls in the goal. And, and Do you think it should have broken her, her pelvis? I think it should have knocked her head off. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what did you do? Decapitation today, Charlie? I, I, well, I think I, it was a, it was a kung fu movie. I felt like there should have been more decapitation. He's not wrong. I mean, th- there should have been more. Yeah, but even Shaolin people. Soccer didn't do that, and that's literally a kung fu soccer film. Right, well, they should have. Well, they had some <laughs> grievous injuries in that movie. In, in that movie, movie, he kicks a ball so hard that when the goalie catches it, all of his clothes get blown off. Oh, uh, yeah. That was... <laughs> so, Why didn't we watch Shaolin Soccer? Yeah, we should have watched that movie. <laughs> the um, But, I mean, how great would that be? She's just like, she, like she's talking about like her being a homecoming. She's like, that bitch isn't going to get my homecoming. And she just fires a soccer ball at her head, and her fucking blonde head just fucking pops. <laughs> <laughs> just falls off. And everyone's like, holy shit, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna win us the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You know, You're really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunities with Charlie Weber. Yeah. <laughs> and Wendy Wu. I think this is your new thing, Charlie. <laughs> the missed opportunities. I got a couple more. Uh, all right. I'll hold hold off on them for right. a second. All right. So here's another thing that I really hate about just this movie in general. Wendy Wu is trying to become homecoming queen and does. Fuck all to be trying to become homecoming queen. What she makes yeah, a poster she, once or twice. She campaigns a little in the beginning, and then really. the poster, and I think that's about it. She complains and says that she needs to do stuff, and then just doesn't do anything. Yeah, well, and all. But she, then again, I guess that also matches with Wendy Wu's character, where everything is just going to happen and turn out magically fine. <laughs> because keep in mind, at the beginning, creepy monk guy was trying to put. 
the necklace that's supposed to protect her around her neck. And yeah, that's a bit rapey. But eventually she understands that, yes, this is a medallion that's going to protect me from evil. So what does she do? When she has a temper tantrum, she oh, rips she it off and throws it away. It's like, I'm sorry, just because you're in a fight with someone, does that mean evil's not going to rip your twat out? No. Which, Maybe you should keep that anyway. Yeah. Which, by the way, so uh, for those of you who have not seen this masterpiece, she wakes up. Uh, the night before, and she has this weird, like, Asian, uh, like, uh, ar- artifact kind of yeah. necklace on, and um, it literally looks like a devil worship tool. Like, there's there's probably a horror movie that starts out exactly the same way. I woke <laughs> up with this creepy fucking necklace on, and she's just like, oh my god, look what's on me, and then just... I'm gonna keep it on, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then she's just like, isn't that weird, everyone? Anyway, definitely wasn't diddled in the middle of the night. <laughs> she wasn't. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> but she, but she wasn't. All right, so <laughs> this movie, for what it is, did surprisingly well. Um, it had more than 5.7 million viewers on the night of its premiere, <laughs> making it the fifth highest viewed um, <laughs> Disney Channel original movie. I'm sure it was already surpassed by High School Musical, which, you know, whatever. But it, that seems like a lot of viewers, but we need to put that into perspective because in 2014, Family Guy averaged 11 million uh, viewers per episode. And if you were to compare this to other shows, um, let's let's take 2013, 2014 season. It's around the average of an episode of The Simpsons, um, which has 5.67 million Saturday night football. Not Sunday, Saturday night football, which averages around uh, 5.63 million. And it's really on par with MasterChef Junior at 5.56 <laughs> million viewers. But it did do... It, when it premiered, it did do better than what Bob Burgers is at, at 4.939. Fuck you, I love Bob's Burgers. She's, she's got slightly less uh, listeners than us. We have, what, 5.8 million? <laughs> Probably yeah. not. All right, but they really wanted this to be something big. Like, in October 2007, Variety reported that a sequel to Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior was planning to start in early 2008. Obviously, this didn't happen. Yeah, I was disappointed. This movie could have used a sequel. There was supposedly... A video game in production what? didn't happen. There was supposed to be a comic series. Didn't happen. <laughs> there were two novels that apparently sold 3 million copies and 1 million copies respectively. So a novel and a sequel. And I can't find them. Wait, <laughs> the, 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 they, wait. they might not they exist. They apparently sold millions of copies. I can't find one. How the f- I found two links on a Yahoo Messages page. Um, and one led to a DVD of the movie. And the other one went to a high school musical book. They have the book series, the high school musical, what? that I could buy, but I couldn't find Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. It's because everybody has them in their basement that they that bought them, and that's why you can't find a copy. It's because during one cold winter, they used it as kindling. Exactly. <laughs> There's one dude that bought them all. That's probably what happened. He bought every single copy. He slowly jerks off to every page. <laughs> every page. <laughs> this... He's a nice guy, but he um, he owns every single Wendy Wu book, and he <laughs> slowly jacks off in every single page. But besides that, he's kind of a cool guy. There, there, yeah, we had him on last Last week, right? <laughs> yeah, there right. are five million books in his house. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> They're all Wendy Woo. <laughs> I'm coming for so yeah, they really wanted this to be big, but it was meh when it came out. I mean, yeah. it it did okay, and <clears throat> honestly, if it didn't pop up on Netflix one day, where I just went, what "The fuck is this?" No one would be talking about it now. Um, it was. <laughs> I don't even. There was actually supposed to be a. Um, it was supposed to be kind of like an interview a couple days beforehand. Uh, what was it called? Anyway, they were, they were going to interview um, the whole cast of the movie, and they were going to answer messages from the audience. Now, you would think that they would have this online somewhere. They they don't. I, I can't find it on YouTube. I can't find a transcript. Oh, a but shame. then again, this is also the company that had to bump the movie up a month. It was supposed to be released in July, but it was released in August because Disney Channel couldn't figure out how to put the movie on their own official website. Jesus, wow. that's bad. That's bad IT department yeah. coordination. But I mean, people like this, uh, especially the people in San Francisco for some reason. The San Francisco Asian American Film Festival considered Wendy Wu a strong protagonist and a good role model. Oh, wow. Fuck them. That's she bad would, idea. If really? I met her in real life, I can't say that I wouldn't punch her in the face. The character or the actress? <sighs> I mean, the actress, she's... She's just trying to make she, it, She man. seems nice. She's just um, trying to make it. And she trained hard, and she takes her roles very seriously. But she fuck al- her. Who cares? But she also says exactly. stuff like, um, she said that she, she says things that are stupid sometimes. Like, take this for example. 
Uh, Song, that's the last name of the actress who played What's Wendy her last Wu. name, Smith? Song. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> she said that she inspired to endure the stunt training the same way that her mother dealt with breast cancer in 2005. That is... It's like, I'm, I'm oranges, s- people. Look, I know stunt training is hard, but comparing it to cancer recovery... Nope. I think there's a bit of a different. Big difference. When you throw a kick, your hair doesn't fall out. Nope. When you... When you do a backflip, you don't vomit for hours. Well, maybe I would. I mean, I'm not exactly yeah, in the best I, shape. I but I think, I think fucking Song could handle it. Uh, also, um, you know, I don't think you're poisoning your body when you work out. That's funny. I did, I did my stunt training so well I had to get radiation. You know, I just... I, <laughs> you, <laughs> you could say, your stunts were so bad they gave me cancer. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I just realized we didn't talk about the ending. Go for it, Paul. So they, they, there's a lot of, like, because um, the mother works at a museum. We forgot to establish that a little earlier. doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. It, it ha- it, her story has to do with uh, not not uh, realizing their culture uh, uh, as much as, like, The same thing as the matter. father's story. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't um, matter. But there's apparently, like, a terracotta, terracotta warrior uh, plot where they come to life. They, they incorporate that legend in this, too. That's not a plot. They just they try to shove education down everyone's throat. Where they'll just stop the movie and have like, oh, so that's how things in China. Oh, yeah. and I love how this story goes. We need to yeah. be good about our Chineseness. <laughs> so then, for some reason, the terracotta warriors are all of a sudden wearing clothes because China just readily um, lets their terracotta soldiers. Oh yeah, they definitely let them let them, let them out every once in a while to around you know, museums and shit. They're like pandas. They gotta run around a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and not <laughs> fuck. <laughs> no, they do come to life when the um, well at that party that Wendy ran away from her from with her talisman. Uh, the the pro, the uh, the main antagonist girl, the, the girl that she's uh, the rivals with. We can she, call her Twat Two. Twat Two. <laughs> twat Two. Uh, she is possessed one. by the by the uh, she's possessed by the uh, the bad guy eventually, and because boy, that's how you resolve conflict um, when you can't do it. In the plot, you just have them beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. And yeah. you were mentioning the stunts. And actually, this is like the big end fight scene. Um, and there was it was pretty good. And there was a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of... Pretty good is relative. But it was... it was There was a lot of like... I'm th- This guy goes down. This guy goes down. This guy goes down. But like everybody's like jumping at the main guy one at a time. That's why he's winning. Or she's winning too. Uh, but I noticed that the uh, the stuntman for, the, for her friend there, her blonde friend... Absolutely, one hundred percent, an Asian man in a wig and a dress, <laughs> <laughs> and not to mention that, but it had big, fucking, like, big boots that went up to his knees. <laughs> it was the greatest. big hairy armpits. Okay, because they would do a lot of slow mos. You could see his and, dick. <laughs> and that's the thing. You see his dick. <laughs> um, when they did a slow mo, it looked like he was trying to cover his face with his hand, but it went like this. <laughs> I'll, de- I'll describe. I'll describe what's going on right now. Do it again, Paul. So it Paul is, is is saying he wanted. They wanted it to go like this, and his hand is running across the front of his face like slowly, where you can't diagonal. see anything. But it went diagonal, and thus then, exposing his whole face. It, it exposed his whole face, and then it came down over it, and, and it was. It just brought me out of it. Not would. that the rest of the movie <laughs> brought me out of it. I was submersed up to that point. I was. I wanted to know what would happen. Uh, would you win, Wendy, or is evil going to overcome the world? I think I was finally out when I saw that the pizza company, um, the pizza company's phone number was five 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 zero one two three, and then <laughs> I it was, didn't notice that. Yeah, and then the, the the company was called the Pizza Slice Company, and I was like, you know what, movie? If you don't give a shit, I don't give a shit either. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's all right. We we pretty much ends. exhausted. I mean, the bad guy loses because stupid magic powers. Power. Everyone realizes. Is, oh my goodness, we were possessed. Did Wardrobe we... change in the middle of a fight. <laughs> yep, and then Wendy Wu becomes homecoming queen, right? Yep. Yeah, mm, so yeah. so the twat girl gets exactly what she wanted because that's how they want life to be. She you know, there's herself. never any harsh she struggles and there's never the any end. sacrifices. Yeah. <laughs> remember remember that scene where she killed herself, Martin? Yeah. That's the alternate ending on the TV. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, credits play as a sad, solemn song is playing in the background and don't you see the silhouette of the girl swinging from her <laughs> neck um so one of my missed opportunities uh one, one's really quick I'll, I'll go through these so one of them was when she was practicing when she was training and he was holding the soda can um i thought it'd be really funny if he, he, she kicked him in the balls like i just <laughs> thought that would <laughs> just kicked him right in the dick that'd be fucking great then the second one was when she, they get the teachers to um 
they possess the teachers. If they came back and they talked with like broken Asian accents, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! This movie's racist enough. Yeah. I like how the, the the black teacher was the angry tiger. Uh, oh guy. yes, like we can't be too racist, and we're gonna try to like really amp up China. What about the black people? Fuck them. Yeah. yeah, fuck. Okay. And we Look have to make the white people the. Uh, the, uh, white the people teachers. are bad. Yeah. Aren't they supposed to be equal? No. Bad no, they white didn't people. make them bad. They made them the leaders in the, 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 the first two, basically. It was so weird. Uh, you guys ready for some five and one star reviews? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so for these, this movie, absolutely. <laughs> and these were written mainly by children. Here's, uh, here's the five star reviews. Five stars. Stars Brenda Song and Shin Komiata. Did a tremendous job with this movie. It is full of action, good dialogue, and comedic moments. Shin does an extra ordinary job, like he did in The Last Samurai. <laughs> this is The Last Samurai? I, I guess so. Since I'm Asian, I really enjoy Asian culture things like the terracotta, which is spelled wrong, warriors, Buddhist monks, and kung fu, even though I'm Japanese. I'd probably spell terracotta wrong, too. Big fan of... Ko- uh, sorry. Big fan of K- Koyamada-san. And it's a story of true sacrifice. No one sacrifices shit, kid. No, uh, no people with bad reviews just have... F- Wait, so people well, with bad reviews true. just have fun. Jeez. So I, I thought that pretty much... Uh, he hit the nail sideways and right. broke it. <laughs> yeah, no, when, <laughs> Wendy had to sacrifice fun. almost not becoming homecoming queen. Almost. almost. <laughs> right. You know how suspenseful that moment was when she might not have been homecoming queen? I almost died. All right, here's the next five star. If I could write this movie as ten... It is very funny. Also, entering, I can't stop watching it. Dot Brenda did an excellent job of acting. I definitely <laughs> like the part when Wendy Wu was beating, spelled like a beat, like the vegetable, up on the teacher. Thank you, Russell Stafford. I am a more intellectual person because of that. This yeah. may be a English as second language person. Uh, no, or, these are six year olds. Yeah, or maybe, maybe these are because it actually says a kid's review. <laughs> What a oh, fucking my. idiot. That's what fucking was... idiot six-year-old fuck. <laughs> yeah, when you actually let your kid um, write a review, I guess you can tag it, because a lot of these were just a kid's review. I, I think uh, these next couple came from somebody who was going through puberty. Because mm-hmm. I love Wendy Wu. It's full of fun, action, and drama. I like Wendy Wu because the high kicks of Brenda's song. Wendy Wu, we're amazing. I give Wendy Wu five stars. That was actually my review. Yeah, I like her. I enjoy her high kicks. <laughs> And a, I, I like Wendy Wu's fat tits. <laughs> she had a pretty fat ass, bro. Just saying. A 31 year old's <laughs> review. I love Wendy Wu. It's full of fun and full will action. This is because Wendy Wu does high kicks. P.S. Vote for Wendy Wu. Thanks, Rashawn. Vote for Wendy Wu. Oh, because. Oh, for the for the prom? Or the homecoming? Homecoming, coming, buddy. That was not. Uh, okay, I get it. I get what is, they... what is homecoming? I don't know what the fuck that is. It's a dance, I think. Yeah, I don't know. What, why is it called homecoming? Because I think it's the first. Uh, I think it coincides with the first home game, home football game. They, were, they didn't mention football at all. In this yeah. Well, well the, wait, hang on. They mentioned yeah, it, but they didn't. The dipshit brother plays football. They, that uh, that's another point too that we didn't talk about. All the men in this fucking movie are insanely stupid, insanely stupid to the point where it's. Yeah, Paul points this out before. Her brother has long hair, and then says, "Hey, can I can I grow ponytails?" Like. What are you talking about? Just put your hair back. You have a ponytail. Yeah, but the dad also said no. But like, you just <laughs> well, he's dumb. <laughs> You're dead. Right. Well, yeah. The boyfriend is a the, f- the uh, so uh, annoyingly stupid. Just I, I I'm convinced he's a closeted homosexual. <laughs> he very well could be. Okay, so here are the one star reviews. Here we go. The script, penned by no less than four writers, is vapid and brainless as Wendy Wu herself. Oh. oh. By the way, yes, this movie had four writers. <laughs> Oh. Two writing teams. Is that a kid's review? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not a kid's review. This next one is, the first review is true. I saw this movie on TV and didn't know Disney would be stupid enough to put it on DVD. Some movies like Twitches and Cowbells and High School Musical and The Cheetahs are... What? Are these actual movies? Uh, they must be, they must be Disney movies. A Disney channel movie. Are better than this one. Ridiculous. Most of the it movie is, is no dialogue. Just fighting. Extremely boring to witch. The fun, though, to witch and laugh at. <laughs> this is definitely English, just secondly. <laughs> yeah. Wendy Wu completely stinks. The story is dreadful because there isn't one. Die, Wendy Wu. Brenda's song let everyone down. This is so bad. Die, Wendy Wu. Die. <laughs> <A> what? <doubt. laughs> that was a kid's review. 
a Listen, Down syndrome review. It actually did have a story. <laughs> I mean, it, this guy has like heard reviews. Saying, this kid has heard other reviews saying it has no story. It sucks. This this had a story. Don't be. I angry. could just picture a kid sitting at a at a keyboard and just hitting on, just like I hate this. Die, die, bitch, die. Oh my god! Uh, change the channel, youngin. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> just chill out, bro. All right, are you guys ready to pick the next movie? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, All right, I made yeah. sure that these are three. Windy Woo three Choo. winners. But I <laughs> vote for it. <laughs> Windy Woo. I totally watched that one. No, die. <laughs> Wind- die, Wind- Wendy Woo, die. Not, not that I don't like you, die. Die. I'm, flat out, I'm gonna murder you, <laughs> murder Wendy. Murder you, Wendy Woo. What if they came out with like an R-rated Wendy Woo? Wouldn't that be? I would produce that shit. Yeah, and they let me. Yeah, they let me write it and shit. Like they would put all my scenes in there. It would probably end up like our first nomination: Surf Nazis Must Die. Yeah, it'd be like that. Or- <laughs> This is about an earthquake that devastates California, and neo-Nazis take over. They kill the grandson of an old woman who hunts them down. Oh, Surf, this, surf Nazis Must Die is the first, our yep, first choice? this is the first oh, choice. Oh, I've seen that one before. Too bad. You might have to see it again. I know. Of course you saw it, because it's a trauma movie. It's a trauma flick, yeah. The next one is Rodents. <laughs> Spelled with a Z. Yes. Medical experiments turn rats into human-sized killers with psychic powers. All right, and the last one is Machine Gun Preacher. The story of Sam Childers, an ex-drug dealer who rescues chill- child soldiers in Sudan. So I think I've heard of that one, too. All right, uh, so your three again are Surf Nazis Must Die, Rodents, or Machine Gun Preacher. Ball, you get to go first. I'm, I'm definitely voting for Rodents. Charlie, we got one for Rodents. We, we haven't had some obvious schlock on here in a while. I know it seems like it might be obvious, but I'm going to go with Surf Nazis Must Die because it is obvious, obvious schlock. And I figured that this might happen. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick Machine Gun Preacher. <laughs> so we'll watch all three of them. So you know oh how boy. I already have a plan for this? You know how I'm going to solve it? How? I'm going to get a die, and this shit's going to be random. Oh, we're going oh. We're going gamer here, everybody. Oh, we're rolling a D3. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, a D3 is rolling a six-sided die, and one, two is one. Uh, three, four is two. Martin five, just six, spilled six, water three, on his... Uh, on his Chromebook, which is okay because Chromebooks are actually disposable. They're actually mostly hollow. <laughs> yeah, there's not much in them. No, that's a 16 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, All right, and now I'm going to describe what's going on. So we got Martin just opened up a <laughs> bag and got a dice out, and so there's a six sided die from the looks of it. Yep, one two surf Nazis must die. Three four rodents. Th- uh, five six five six machine gun preacher. You ready? I'm ready. Charlie, what are we doing? That is five. That is a number three. We're doing Machine Gun Preacher. Machine Gun Preacher. Machine Gun Preacher. All right. All right. All right, so next episode, Machine Gun Preacher starring Gerard Butler. All right. So until next time, get the fuck out of my house. Get the fuck off my internet. Just fuck off. That's it for now. Catch more episodes on iTunes and Stitcher. Like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash WDIJWpodcast. Got a comment, recommendation, or just some good old-fashioned hate mail? Email us at WDIJWpodcast at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at SomeJerkFB or on Tumblr at SomeJerkFromBoston.tumblr.com. Until next time, if Grandma says not to worry, don't question where the random young man came from. He's totally not there for creepy reasons. Adios for now.